Hey you guys, this is Josh with Homesteading Family. And here on Riverbend, which is what we call our farm here in North Idaho, it's our goal to take this land and that has been a little wild and a little neglected for a while and turn it into sustainable production and management and good use for our family. And one of the ways that we're doing that is by logging the land here with horses, as you see, uh, my friend Lucas is gonna come through in just a minute. And we've got about 40 acres here and over 30 of it is in timber. And we have several different goals. Some of it is to leave the land completely wild and just natural and alone. Some of that land we're gonna leave pretty much to itself but take out the dead and dying debris or break it down and help it decompose. Now, some of it, like this area in here that's relatively flat, we're going to be opening it up quite a bit and creating kind of a savanna, um, you know, mostly pasture scenario with some trees. So we're currently taking out all of the harvestable timber, the marketable timber that's sellable to begin to open this up and let some sunlight in and meet our management goals. And Doing it with horses is a sustainable and really low impact way to uh, take these trees out on the land. So as soon as my friend Lucas is done here pulling a few logs, we're going to sit down and talk a little bit about horse logging and share with you what it's all about and what he loves about it and, and how it's helping to achieve our goals here at Riverbend. So I got my friend Lucas here to take a break and uh, I think his horse, what's your horse's name? Dan. Dan. Dan needed a break too. So we thought we'd sit down with you for a minute and just talk horse logging. Yep. And um, for us, horse logging is a great way to have some low impact on the land here as we're trying to um, shape this land up a little bit, harvest some timber, and meet some of our goals on the land. And I think that's, you know, the horse logging is something that not a lot of people have seen or realized that you can still do today. Yeah. So um, how, how did you get into horse logging? How did you get into doing this line of work? Well, it's kind of a little bit of a complicated story, but basically I had a neighbor that wanted his place done with horses. And so he was going to get me the team and then I was going to start at it and it, it ended up falling through but I decided you know I'm already this far into it I might as well just try so I did I got this horse from a rancher um, so just started with one horse and then I worked my way up now I got two and just kind of low-key but just doing what I enjoy so so you you really enjoy being out here. What is it I about do. what is it about this kind of work that you like that, that that fills you up and that you enjoy? Basically, the the main thing for me is I, I enjoy working critters, like working, working with the horses. Animals. That that's that's kind of where my passion is, and so I, I enjoy doing the logging and stuff. But really, it's about the horses. Okay. It's, the main thing is the main thing is getting out yep. there with the horses and kind of being out in nature yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I definitely enjoy that and so that first guy that you were going to work for why, why did he want to log with horses i'm i'm not all that sure it okay. was kind of he he thought that it would be a an opportunity and um ended up that he must have reconsidered or something but still i i figured you know i I'm gonna try. Okay. <laughs> See if I can make you go at it. So, what do you find the the people that are hiring you? What what why why are they wanting to bring horses in and log over just bringing in machinery that can get it done a lot faster? And actually, the landowner makes a little bit more money. Um, yeah. So, the people that you've worked with, why why are they wanting to bring you in with horses versus you know the, the competition, so to speak, on a mm -hmm. on a machine? Basically, a, a lot of it is it's it's way easier on the ground. There's there's just way less impact on stuff, and um, I can do thinning and stuff that a, a machine can't really do because yep. I can it, if a trail's this wide, I can get in there, you know, versus a skid or something. You've got an eight foot wide swath you got to take out. So that's a that's a lot of it. I can kind of target more of the prime timber without really hurting the ground. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. And it, there's a lot less damage, like you alluded to, to the rest of the timber here. And, and of course, we want to tread lightly on the ground. We don't want to disturb, disturb the ground any more than we can. Yeah. Uh, than we have to. 
And, but one of the things I've noticed, having been in the woods and around logging a bit, is that the machinery, not only does it tear up the ground, it tears, tends to tear up a lot of the smaller trees yeah, along your, the way. It creates growth. wider paths. Yep. And it doesn't allow you to manage the forest in as refined of a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what does it what does a day out here look like for you? What's your process? How, how how do you go through a day to go from timber standing up here to logs heading out on the truck? Yeah, well that's a that's a good question. <laughs> I kind of have a a little bit of a system, but I don't always follow it. Kind of basically, I I get up in the morning. I got to feed the horses. You know, you got to get them fed before you can work them. So I. Typically, I take two, three hours, and I just fell trees for a few hours just so the horses have time, you know, to eat and whatnot. So the horses aren't working all day long, eight no. hours a day. You, nope. it's, it's kind of broken up because the horses are working hard when they're working. So you've got a system of yeah. making sure they're well cared for, they're yep. rested while you're getting other work. And so it kind of goes back and forth? Kind of, yeah. So basically, the, they say you can only work a horse about four hours a day is is basically as much as you can okay if it's hot it's probably less so what i try to do is work each horse where i'm at right now i just work them about two hours a day that way you know they i'm not overworking them they're they're ready to go when it's time to go and then i just work the rest of the time basically okay so yeah cutting lemon yeah i got yeah. it horse logging is a little different than machine logging because if you if you had somebody come to it with machines, they they're gonna knock your tree down, and they're gonna just skid it right to the landing branches, everything on it. Versus with horse logging, I have to I cut the log and limb it right there on the ground. Yeah. So then it's basically all the slash stays in the wood in the woods. I don't have any you know piles to deal with and stuff. And then I just take the logs to the landing and then bring in a self loader. Right, so that's one of the things we like. Typically up here, right, when a, when the logging operation comes in, they pile up all the slash, the slash being all the debris that's left yep. over the limbs and yep. everything, and they burn it. Yeah, yeah and that, that's the way to, to get rid of it up here. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to see all of that material go up in smoke myself. And so in this method, it actually distributes pretty evenly all of the limbs and everything. You take some of that and cut it up a little so that it gets closer to the ground. Yeah. And that's just going to add all that organic material back to the ground over time. And yeah. to me, that adds to the soil, to the environment a lot better. And it's less work for you, and it's just a better way to go. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of, you know, in, in two, two, three, maybe four years, a lot of that debris, if it's, you know, two feet off the ground or whatever, it just kind of melts in there versus having, you know, like a pile where you burned it and then all that, it's basically lost. You know, you're just kind of, it's gone. Well, it is lost. You're just putting it into the air instead of returning in a natural ecosystem. Tree yeah. dies for whatever reason, falls over, yep. it decomposes and returns to the ground and then things grow back up. Uh -huh. So when we're taking trees out, that's a benefit that we can leave. So we're gonna take some of the marketable timber, but by leaving all the limbs, we're actually returning that back to the earth and still creating some sustainability within the system. Yeah, building a little bit of topsoil and whatnot, you know, makes more moisture and whatever holds to the ground, you know, more trees can come up and stuff, right. you know, the, the little ones. Yeah, absolutely. Helps helps the continuation of things. Yeah. Uh, another thing that's probably interesting for people to know and for you guys to know if you're thinking about logging is uh, a little bit of the economics of it for you and for me because it's a little bit different than today's mechanical logging. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how does that work for you? So basically, it's it's a lot slower than doing machine logging. Mm -hmm. It's it. I mean, that's the nature of it. You're using technology from 18, 1700s. <laughs> it's, it's old. Sure. Um, doing it the way they've been doing it for really for a hundreds long time. and thousands of years. Yeah. yeah. But basically, it um, you've got, I probably maybe even do just like a fifth or a sixth the amount of trees out that like a, a machine logger would. That one guy with a machine yeah. can do versus one guy with a horse. Yeah. But of course, like we said, the impact on the land is a lot less yeah yeah and there's less there's less overhead for me in the sense of i can do small jobs because i don't need to do five acres a day or whatever you know right. if i had the big big equipment and stuff and whatnot basically i i can say it, 
there's a lot of variables with just you know limbs and stuff and how much how much work it takes to get a log on the ground size of trees and stuff but i bank on doing skidding 30 40 logs a day okay. that, that's what i try for and you know if i had a cat or something a skidder i do probably 10 times that cat but, being a piece of machinery yeah that moves the cat, logs around pillar yeah it, it would take a few cats to <laughs> regular cats to You'd never get try that done. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that yeah i it's slower but i can make it work just right. because it it's so, easier on stuff so on the homeowner side you make a bit less money because the guy pulling the logs out and the way lucas is doing it that that's we've got to pay him a little bit more for me that doesn't matter so much for us while we do want to have a sustainable harvest of timber that we can make a little bit of money on our goal is not really to profit here so much as it is to manage the land well and return what we get back into the management of the land whether that's reseeding the ground whether that's planting new trees mending yeah. fences yeah that, that's our goal here at riverbend is to manage this forest well to eventually do some grazing and other activities under here uh, in a sustainable fashion and so what comes from the forest ultimately just gets returned back for us into other yeah. enterprises and so I think the value is in that we do less while we may not make as much dollars we're doing we're having to do less restorative work yeah that's gonna you know by the machines being here they're gonna tear up the ground more they're gonna damage more trees and so yeah. that's a lot that, that's gonna have a cost to it to put things back to the way we want it yeah. Whereas your 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 footprint is a lot lighter, so yep. in in yep. that way we're really saving money. On that note, horse logging is not something where you're going to go in and just log it all fast and make a bunch of money at it. it it's not like a clear cut. I I don't do clear cuts and stuff really, where I just take everything, mm -hmm. just because the 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 nature of it. That's not what I'm trying to do. Right. My my point is to go in, you know, low impact, take what I can do it that way instead of just take everything fast right Love and it. that way you get a you get a, a healthy stand with you know older trees and younger ones coming up you've got a lot more you, you end up getting a lot more out of the woods than if you took it all and then wait another hundred years for it to grow back and take it all again right. you know you, you end up with more timber in the long run Right, yeah, and, and a kind of a sustainable harvest over time. Yeah, We, we have a yeah. generational goal on this land, so we don't want to just go and, you know, and take everything we out, can out of it and then sell it or leave it kind of empty for the next generation. We want to create something that's going to be reproductive and regenerative yep. and, and, you know, give little bits at a time over time while doing other functions. Like yep. this area we're sitting in here, it's actually fairly dense, so you're taking out pretty much all the marketable yeah. and then we're going to come back through and thin because there's a lot of small dense trees mm -hmm. and so we can help out the growth a little bit by coming in and thinning those and start to open that up let some light in yeah and eventually do a little bit of grazing under here while growing some timber up yeah and that starts to be become a cycle that uh -huh. can can last past past myself and into the next generation yeah and even like like this i could probably come back five ten years from now take out say maybe a quarter or a third of it right and it just you know it just keeps giving like he's saying right you know very cool so uh, a few practicalities especially for people that have some land that they might want to log or that are thinking about getting land or like i would consider if you're looking at buying land in a sizable piece you want to be able to do multiple things on it so having some land that has timber on it that can provide a little income um, but that you can maybe do other things with like having your animals in the understory that's providing food for you or some sort of small enterprise um, for you as a horse logger, a um, couple questions. One, what size properties do you work on? Like what's the biggest and what's probably the smallest that, that, you, would, good, that you would consider? Good question. So basically if it's, I'd say if it's above 20, 30 acres, it, it becomes, it, it's slow enough that if the job's too big, then it takes a lot longer. So I, I kind of, probably my target is, you know, 10, 15 acres. Because smaller than that, I I would do. I've done I've done jobs that are just an acre or two. Okay. But it's kind of you know by the time it it takes a while to get everything, get the horses used to a new spot, 
and stuff. There's a lot. Yeah, a lot for you there. to get set up. Yeah, and move, I gotta, move, there's still a move-in yeah. cost, just like machinery. It costs money to bring machinery in. Yep. You have a cost to bring stuff in. So there's got to be enough scale yeah. for, for you to move in, do the job, move out, and and make some money on it and yeah. treat everything well. Yeah. See, most of the time I, I have to leave my horses at the job, so I pull a horse trailer and I bring some panels. You know, set up a set up a corral. A, yeah, a corral. And all that takes time. So it basically the job has to be big enough for me to, to you know, to where that, that cost of moving isn't just like half of the cost of right. doing it, basically. Yeah, but there's a lot of ambiguity and whatever, you, however you say that word. Ambiguousness, maybe? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we probably made a new word up. But um, because there's the timber dependent on the species and how much it's worth how open grown or you know how much limbs basically what what we talk about the crown is the part of the tree that has limbs if the crown's about a third i can do a lot faster than if the crown's almost down to the ground so then if if it's good timber with with not a lot of a crown i can i can take a bigger job okay because it's it's faster so so is there a cap to the size of property you work on or are you happy to just go through slowly on a larger piece of property and there's and, not and work or i mean i know just learning here with you there's only so far you really want to be able to pull logs so we still yeah. need, need need to be able to get a truck in so far yeah. to, to get there to make it worth your time and effort and and not too hard on the horses so there are some limitations there there are yeah, yeah. a lot of it weather is a big deal because if it's, I can, I can skid in the snow just fine, but I can't skid in the wet snow because it makes, you know, balls on the horse's feet and you can break a leg on a horse that way. It's hard. I mean, if I'm skidding in the mud, it tears the ground up and that's kind of basically kind, kind of like this wet away. spring we've been having. Yeah. Yeah. So then it's like, <laughs> if, if my, my usable time of the year isn't, isn't as long as it would be if I had machinery, I kind of want to target a job I can finish in say like may through september yeah basically versus you know having to go from may push it into say november or something and try and work some in january and then try and pick it up in the spring it just ends up you know i like going in getting a job done finishing it and then get on to another mm -hmm. job that's that's kind of my philosophy yeah real good well we're here in North Idaho, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody out there that might want to get a hold of you. How big of a circle are you, do you work in? How, how far, you know, how, do you go into Montana or into Washington That's or Southern Idaho? It depends. I, I like to stay closer to home, obviously. But sure. I, for this job, I, I come three and a half hours for it. And because there's enough timber here, it's worth my while. Now, if Josh had, say, two acres, I probably would have said no, just because it takes a while to get everything up that's here and sure. whatnot. Right now, I'm, I'm basically in Idaho. That, that's where I work. I mean, that's, that's home. My family's been here a long time, so my roots go deep. It's a good place it, to be, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And so I, I say maybe down the road I'd try Montana, probably not Washington. I, I don't really like working there, but it, that, that'd be down the road. I yeah. mean, I may consider it, but... It's, it's not real high on the list. Gotcha, all right. So. Well, if it's all right with you, we're gonna leave some contact info in that the description down below. So if people want to call you, I don't, yep. I don't think you have a website, do you? Oh, right no, now? no. No website. I'm, I'm not technically but, savvy. But <laughs> Luke's got a number, and so we'll leave his phone number down below. Yeah, and he's just done a fantastic yeah. job. Gosh, you've been here. Well, you were here in the fall for a little while. Yeah. And then I think bit. you've been here for a couple months now. Pretty it's close. It's been quite a bit yeah. of work. And so we're getting close to wrapping it up. But yeah. it's, it's been real good, and it's looking looking great around here. Yeah. Well, I'm so, glad you're happy with what I'm doing. It's A lot of it is you, when I'm horse logging, I have to make sure the customer knows what to expect. Yeah. Because, you know, if it's, it's different. You know, it's not like machine logging you're not gonna it's not gonna be fast i'm gonna be there a while and weather's gonna slow me down but ultimately in the long run for for people like josh 
turned out quite a bit better. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great. It's been a great process and we're just excited for everything that's happening and we hope yeah. that you're going to be, be able to come back over the years and oh, yeah. help with this part of the project. Yep. And um, so thanks for taking the time to sit down with yeah, me today no yeah, and, and just share with everybody what we're doing here and with what you do. Yep. Yeah, and um, I guess we'll kind of get back to work. So awesome. yep. right on, Lucas. Yeah. Everybody, thanks for hanging out with us today. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.